Hi everyone, this is a quick unboxing video of my latest watch acquisition. I don't really do a lot of watch related content on this channel, but this one's got me excited and it is my second Spinnaker watch. I hope I'm not mispronouncing this, it's uh, it's called the, the Bodger. Uh, honoring or commemorating uh, an actual individual who escaped from um, East Germany back during the uh, basically the I, I guess you could call it the Cold War era it was like post World War II and he ended up building his own little submergible uh, device and I'm probably gonna like do a, a horrible job of of uh, relaying that story so uh, be sure to do a search and I'm sure you'll find better information about it but anyhow Spinnaker has actually released two versions of this watch. The first one was released a while back and it was using a steel uh, band. This one uses uh, a rubber band uh, or uh, strap and this particular one, I believe the only major difference between the two aside from the from the uh, Shrezo band is that this one has um, uh, AR coating on the Sapphire Crystal whereas the other one is not listed as having it. And then that's something that generally speaking Spinnaker does advertise when they do include it in their watches. So. Um, I'm, I'm betting that it didn't have it, but if anybody knows for sure, uh, let me know in the comment section. This is one that has me really excited because the dial design on this watch is pretty pretty awesome. Um, I, I'm not sure if there's other watches out there that have used a similar design, but um, I'll show you in, in just a moment. And uh, this is the first time I'm actually <laughs> opening this box, even though it looks kind of uh, torn over here on the side, but that's just from shipping. Uh, but this is exactly how it came. Uh, this specific watch is supposed to come in a one of those like uh, weatherproof pelican style cases but this one in particular is going to be black with blue accents i believe the specific watch that i uh shows is the one with the black uh dial and the black strap the reference number from spinnaker sp-5083-01 it's, it's labeled as the obsidian black okay so i've got the box here it's been here the whole time not like it went anywhere but let's uh let's open it up and see what this looks like on the inside so here we go Oh, right off the bat, this is actually really nice. Uh, I really like when companies go out of their way to make the act of just the packaging box have little details that add to the to the uh, overall experience. And in this case, as you can see, this looks like um, it's either like a topographic topographical map or maybe like oceanic. Uh, it's it's like a dark blue, and then this is like a it's like a yellow color, uh, kind of yellow in the gold sort of spectrum. So. Uh, very nice, looks very classy, and that theme is basically throughout the entire box, including the Spinnaker logo. So there's just a little uh, phone pad in here, and you can actually see the indentations from the the top of the case. So that's very typical of like the Pelican style cases or the ones that you can find at like Harbor Freight or whatnot. And so here's the box. I can tell that this is the top over here. It's got the Spinnaker logo. Okay this in there and uh, there you have it that's a really nice box so black with uh, it's like a dark bluish color as far as the actual accents for the um, you know the straps and the little this is for the equalization so that you can properly you know like the equalizer or whatnot if it if you've been at elevation or it's been underwater or whatever so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just open it up and it's got this is uh, it looks like it's crushed but it's not uh, it's there's like a plastic um, sort of protector there so that's what's actually scratched but uh, the case actually looks to be in really nice shape which it should be as it's brand new and uh, here it goes so there's the watch um, there's the uh, name limited edition on the back which is really nice and then all the uh, instruction manual warranty and booklet and stuff like that are in this little nice uh, package here this is the, I'm guessing this is the warranty card, which is actually made out of like a credit card plastic material. So you can put this in your wallet and then you've got the instruction manual here, full in English. So I, I think these are completely localized. So if you purchase it through uh, any of the English speaking websites, um, then be mindful that's going to be in English. And then you've got this little uh, booklet here, which probably tells the story. So. I'll, uh, let's see if that actually <laughs> focuses. If it does, what I'll do is I'll hold this for a couple of seconds at a time and you can always just, uh, pause the video and read if you feel like it. Probably available on their site, though. And there's the man, the legend, Mr. I hope I'm pronouncing your 
name correctly, sir. Bodker. Bodker? Well, either way, he's a hero. Without a cape. And then there's some artwork. And then the number. So, apparently mine is number 41 out of 500. And that's the back. And that completes all the documentation. So now let's get to the watch itself. And I'm pretty sure this padding is just there. It's a big block, essentially. And then that, that side. So I don't think there's anything else to show. So, uh, not a pillow. It just comes on a foam insert. Um, which is fine, I guess. Kind of goes with the with the whole theme. Also makes it so that this whole thing is a little bit more uh, resistant to to weather. So if it does get wet, you don't have to worry about stuff getting you know damaged. But um, here's the uh, the watch itself. I'm gonna try and show it to you without removing the protective covering first. And so the first thing you're gonna notice is shadowing with the indices in the on the dial, and that is the trademark of this watch. This watch has floating indices on the dial, which is pretty awesome. This is what drew me to this to this watch, and uh, it's an amazing design. Um, you know, I'm sure that it's, it's very possible there's been other watches uh, uh, built this way as well, but uh, this is the first one that I've actually come across, uh, you know, at least during release, so I'm pretty happy that I, I was able to snatch one. A as of this unboxing, there's still a... Uh, uh, inventory available because I checked the website and you can still hit the uh, add to cart button so but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, within the next like a uh, couple of weeks they go out of stock and once they do they won't come back I think from the steel band version only the Raven Black was available and they had something like six different dial colors so uh, it's fairly easy to find 20% um, uh, off coupons for these watches uh, online uh, maybe even more if you search properly but um, you know just uh, be sure to get a coupon if, if you can just because the, uh, the 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 main price of admission for this watch is 650 US dollars which is pretty steep I mean they are uh, a really good brand they're they're considered kind of a they used to be a micro brand I think these days because they're producing more watches and they they have a little bit more of a larger um, uh, audience uh, I, I would wager to say that they're a little bit larger than a micro brand nowadays but uh, they still make like uh, a lot of like limited uh, number or limited edition watches and things like that. So I'll remove it from the covers in just a moment to show a little bit more. But before I do, I wanted to show you this watch right here. This is the uh, Bratner V2. There was three versions with the with the metal band, and uh, one of them was petrol black. There's a, a like a blue. I forget the, the actual name. Maybe royal blue or something like that. And then there's this this one here, the uh, emerald green. And uh, they all have differences, not just in the uh, color of the dial, but, but also the, the color of the, of the actual um, compressor style bezel, which I'll show you operating here in just a moment. That was the other reason why I love this watch. I, I, I'm kind of a sucker. I, I know there's thousands upon thousands. Well, maybe that's a, an exaggeration, but there are a lot of different uh, diver watch um, options out there. And the ones that always dr dr drive my attention are the ones that have some sort of like functionality that's a little bit, you know, uh, different than the rest. And uh, this one's no exception. So this watch has a compressor style bezel. So you'll notice uh, when I rotate this uh, crown over here, the top one, the bezel actually rotates inside. It has a really nice action. And I think the uh, that's something that they resolved in the V2, which is this one. The V1, from what I understand, the action was a little bit more loose. So this one kind of feels more like it, it has like, almost like a hydraulic sort of <laughs> feel to it, which is really nice. Um, and I've never had any issues with it, like moving on its own or anything like that. And I wear it all the time. So uh, this watch, I, I absolutely love it. And the the actual steel band on it is probably the most comfortable one I've ever uh, owned. It has the, uh, like, I guess they call it like rice beads or something like that. And uh, it, it just fits me perfect. I have a close to seven inch diameter uh, wrist and I, you know, the number of links that I removed and everything um, came out perfect. So it's not tight, it's not loose. Uh, as soon as it warms up, it, it actually kind of fits perfectly. And so pretty happy with this watch. I've had it for quite a few months now and I, I wear it fairly often. It sees a lot of uh, rotation on my wrist, more so than uh, most of my other watches. One thing I wanted to mention is that when I caught uh, this, this watch, um, Spinnaker was still using the script logo on the back, which I think looks really classy for something like this. Um, they have since switched over to the block uh, font style and which is probably what they're going to be doing from now on and even the leftover versions of this one have that uh, because I have seen a few people that have posted pictures of the ones they've received in the last few months and they seem to have the new logo. So I'm going to remove the protective plastic 
and there it goes. Oh, it's, it's got even more protective uh, cover on it. So we'll get to that in just a moment, but I just wanted to show you a close up of the watch real quick, just so you can see like the shadows for the indices, and that's pretty cool. The hands move underneath it, well, at least the. Uh, it looks like uh, the even the hour hand does uh, when it hits the uh, 9 o'clock. I think it probably doesn't, it's not long enough to reach the other ones, but at least with the 9 o'clock and maybe the 6 o'clock, uh, the hour hand, and then the minute and second hands both move under all the indices, which is pretty cool. So, if anything, this makes it a lot easier to see exactly what time uh, the watch is on. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and set the time, set the date, and uh, remove that little thing and wear it on my wrist so you can see what it looks like. And uh, obviously it has all the usual information, including the model number, and it's got the number there too of the watch, so that matches what's in the card, 41 out of 500, so let's put it on the wrist. Okay, and we're back, and the watch is on my wrist, and I gotta say, this is a very comfortable watch to wear. I get lucky because, for whatever reason, my wrist size is just perfect for the specific holes on the on the, on the the band for most watches that I, that I acquire. But um, a couple of observations that I will make, though, uh, not to nitpick or anything, but the buckle doesn't seem to sit flush, which is kind of strange, as you can see by the sun, and I think it might just be, I'm, I'm sort of like one hole from the last one uh, on the band itself and uh, it kind of picks out a little bit so i would love to see that be a little bit more you know prone to sort of hugging the 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 band itself and the other thing is uh trying to get so i don't know if you notice uh here if you can see it let me push this back a little bit but the very tip of the of the band um has kind of a it's sort of like an indentation here uh just to make it a little bit more difficult for it to come out come come loose i guess which is it's kind of a nice touch for a sport slash dive, diver watch, uh, but there's two things about it. One, it made it a little bit diff difficult to um, get it through the first ring. This one doesn't move. This is actually static in there. And two, um, if you notice, it's also sticking out a little bit here. It doesn't actually like hog the uh, uh, the band. So, you know, just maybe nitpicking a little bit, but um, it's not a big deal. I obviously haven't wore it long enough for me to tell you, hey, it's like catching all a bunch of stuff or anything like that. But just a just kind of a heads up there that. Uh, it seems like both the buckle as well as the tip of the band itself seem to want to sort of stick out a little bit. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, the watch looks amazing. I really love how this wears. Uh, again, this is close to a seven inch uh, wrist. I'd say somewhere between six and three quarter to seven inch uh, wrist. And uh, it, I, I love just the the dimensions of this watch. This is a 42 millimeter watch as far as the actual um, case um, uh I guess the, the, the case width diameter. Uh, the lock to log, I don't know exactly how, how much it is because this one has an integrated, if you can, if you see here, this is actually one of those like integrated band things where you don't really have the two logs coming out. But it does wear, in my opinion, it wears uh, pretty much as, as good as a 40 millimeter watch would. Uh, obviously a little bit bigger than that, but, but it doesn't feel overly large. It doesn't feel like it's that much bigger. So I'm pretty happy with the way it feels. It's just very attractive to look at from different angles, especially with that floating dial. And I don't know if the camera is doing it justice. From from my point of view here, it just looks amazing. So obviously I see it more from like that angle right there. They did a really good job with the with the brushing for the steel case. Um, there's a lot of brushing in most most areas basically, and that just makes it look very solid. It it doesn't make it look cheap and and shiny and all that stuff. It just kind of absorbs a little bit of the light just enough to make it look a little bit darker. The perception is a little bit of a darker color because of that brushing, which is really nice. And the other thing is the bezel is pretty stiff, but it's a 120 click bezel, so it feels really nice. And there's absolutely no play. This is probably the first watch that I've owned that has zero play, like none. Like if you go like this, it just moves the watch. Very nice. It has um, this sort of uh, like teeth here you want to call um with a lot of grip so very nice very nice touch this is a beautiful watch all around i'm very happy with it awesome watch awesome job by uh, spinnaker watches all right so i wanted to give you a close-up view of both of these watches just so that you can compare them you might be cross shopping between them if you're looking at different uh, spinnaker watches this is not a limited edition though as far as i can tell definitely didn't have a limited edition pricing to it um, this one is so this is the only one that's at risk of going out of stock um, so as of my unboxing and review it should be available if it's not i apologize 
try eBay or Chrono24 or one of those websites. Visual differences, you can see that this uses more of that re rectangular and square um, indices sort of motif, whereas this one uses the more traditional diver watch round indices with the triangular and some rectangular. Nothing traditional about the design itself of the of the actual dial with the floating indices, so it's definitely the forte of this watch. It's got that logo which carries over to the crown. Now this is an NH35, so it's a Seiko movement. Uh, really good, there's nothing bad to say about it. This one uses a Miyota, I believe it's a 9014. I used to not be big on Miyota movements just because of their sound. I have other watches that use them and they're the, the rotors are really, really noisy, but this one is, I mean, you can kind of hear it, I guess, but it's fairly quiet, um, and the movement, the sweep of the of the second hand is super smooth. Uh, I'll say that this is definitely the smoother of the two in, in uh, terms of the sweeping of the hand. As far as I know from everything that I was reading, this is a better movement than that one. Um, I haven't tested it for accuracy or anything like that since I just open it up, but I won't be surprised if it's within, like, anywhere from, you know, five to eight seconds per day or something like that. But all of that to say that this actually, for the price, it I, I think it's justifiable, the way it's built, build quality, I mean, it feels really nice, very solid, good movement, awesome dial design. Um, the brush case, the strap, this actually feels really good, aside from the couple of uh, nitpicky things that I mentioned about the uh, the buckle and the, and the basically the end tip of the, of the man itself. But it feels very, very, like, durable and, and uh, also fairly su uh, supple for for how durable it feels at the same time so uh, it's not like stretchy or anything but but it does feel uh, pretty flexible so uh, pretty nice I'm sure that that'll break in and feel a little bit better with time I just wanted to give you that close-up view uh, especially in comparison with the Ratner V2 which is another great watch from Spinnaker all right so quick recap of specs before I go uh, so this is using a uh, Japanese Miyota Automatic 9015. I probably mentioned 9014 earlier, but it is a 9015 Miyota Automatic Movement. Um, the case is made out of the 316L stainless steel. Uh, it is a 42 millimeter case with about 13 millimeters of thickness, and it does sport a sapphire lens crystal with anti-reflective coating, which I believe is the major change between this release and the prior release that came with the steel bands. Uh, this one specifically is the carbon black color and it has a unidirectional bezel, as I mentioned, which is 120 clicks, which um, feels really nice, very solid. There's absolutely no play on this bezel. And the band is a 26 millimeter um, integrated rubber strap. You know, that's one of the drawbacks of this watch. If you get it, you get it because you like the sum of all parts uh, since you won't be able to get any replacement. You can't uh, use a NATO band with this. Um, it does show that lock to lug is 47 and a half milli uh, millimeters, which I think it's is fairly good. It feels comfortable on the wrist, and um, being an integrated um, strap style, it it, it it wears a lot of, a little bit smaller. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, I I think for the price, 650 dollars US, plus the very common to find 20% um, off coupons. Uh, this is still a pretty attractive uh, watch at that price range based on the future set and the fact that it's a limited run with the very attractive dial design. So i um, very happy with this. Very nice design, very nice presentation. Good job by Spinnaker. Um, happy with the watch. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. No pun intended.